Let's switch gears a little bit. Come over here. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, we just have a fantastic technician. Come on, okay? That's Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Um, we always enjoy having him on. He's uh, just so thorough, and we really appreciate it. Uh, again, you can check him out over at Ord-Oracle.com and check us out on YouTube as well. If you type in Tom O'Brien and Tim Ord, um, all the archives are there. Give us a like and subscribe while you're there. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. So, absolutely. Um, so we get started. I think we should. I'm I'm looking forward to what you have to say. All right. Uh, so look at chart one. And uh, in the past, well, I always talked about. You know, you need panic at a bottom. If you don't have panic, you don't have a bottom. So if you go, if market goes down, and there's virtually no panic, then it's going to continue down. Uh, continue down until finally until. The market starts to find panic, and that's when the bottom process uh, starts. And panic can actually can happen anywhere, and actually can happen in an uptrend. And the best tool I use for uh, for panic is a trend. Trend close. Anyhow, the trend is uh, advancing. It, the definition of a trend, or yeah, the definition of a trend is the advancing issues over declining issues, and you divide that by advancing volume over declining volume. So it, it really gives you a good picture of what the market's doing. So it, it includes advanced decline and it includes up down volume. So it's combined in all in one tool. So a reading of one is pretty much everything is equal. You got as much up volume as down volume, and you got as much advancing issues, declining issues. When you get above like 1.2, then it starts to show there's more volume going into the declining stocks and less volume. Or is more volume going yeah into the declining stocks and less volume going into the up stocks, and that's a, kind of a, a situation where panic can develop because once volume is hitting all the the up and down uh, or actually down volume is hitting the up stocks and down stocks, and that's usually when you get you know a really bad situation because chances are everything's going down, and that's an opportunity time to look into the market because panic only happens in a very short period of time. And so when you start to find panic, uh, you know you're going into a low. So I don't want to confuse anybody, but on this chart in chart one, uh, the bottom window is a three-day three, three day trend. And again, a one-day trend of 1.2 or higher is showing there's panic in the market. And so therefore, the more days you get of panic in a market, the more closer you are to a low. So anyhow, on um, June 13th or 14th, which is last week, a three-day trend uh, hit in bullish, uh, a bullish reading. I think it was a 1.4 reading. And the next window up is a two-day trend. A two-day trend, uh, when it gets to, this is the average of uh, 1.5. So you get two days of average 1.5. On a, a five-day trend, you need up a 1.25, and on a 10-day trend, in other words, 10 days of 1.2 or higher on average is showing that's two weeks of panic. So that's quite a bit of panic in a period. But what I'm trying to say here, last week uh, on June 13th and 14th, the two-day, three-day, and five-day, and 10-day all in and hit panic readings, suggesting a bottom was forming. Uh, so and it did, and the market's starting to bounce now. Not real uh, stripping, but pretty much last week is a worthwhile low uh, according to the trend because we did have panic in those the two day, three day, five day, and ten day. So um, so that's what I want to say about that. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Move on to chart two. Perfect. We get this over here. And uh, okay, chart two. So actually, I. The stuff labeled in three or in blue there are the trend closes. So I got in the, and if you notice, we actually jumped above a head and shoulders bottom there. Uh, I got listed in red uh, where the neckline is and the left shoulder is, the head is, and the, and the right shoulder. And we bumped above that uh, neckline. And actually, we had panic right before the neckline. We actually had panic right after the neckline. So nobody really believed that was a bottom. But over the last, um, I guess this is the last couple of weeks, shows where all those days uh, where trend reading reached 1.2 or higher. So you got a, quite a cluster over the last uh, 
two weeks here of bullish trend readings on the close. So we, we bumped above the, the neckline. I think uh, uh, I, I did a measuring target. You can get uh, kind of a projection where the, the head and shoulders may go. I think on the SPY, uh, or actually this is, yeah, the SPY is, is uh, 5555. Five, five, five. So that's my upside target. That's where the head and shoulders projection is, which is about 1% higher, 1.5% higher. So, But that would be the projection for the head and shoulders bottom. It can go higher, but most likely uh, it won't go much less than that. So we're in an uptrend. Uh, tomorrow's a holiday. That's the reason why uh, volume is light today. Uh, will the day be an up day or, or a down day? Not for sure here. But if you look at the volume chart, uh, the market yesterday was up six days in a row. Uh, momentum plays a lot in the market. Uh, if you get five days or more up in a row, uh, it's usually a bullish sign. Yesterday we're up six, and today it may be even seven. Uh, if you go back and do the statistics on that, what happens when it's uh, six days up, uh, seven days up, uh, which I have, the market is usually up 91% of the time within five days. So even though there could be a pullback here next day or two, in general, this market should work higher over the next uh, five days. I'm not saying all five days will be up days, but it will be market will be higher within five days. So next Tuesday at this time, the market should be higher than where or actually since this business days, so it would be next Wednesday because tomorrow's a holiday. So anyhow, yep. the trend's up. Not seeing any huge danger sign on a short term basis here. So there's we got enough panic in the market to drive higher. We got you know so many days up in a row. Uh, you got kind of a bullish head and shoulders pattern for me here. So you got a lot of good stuff going on. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, Tim, we're about to go to break, so stay right there. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, we're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you guys are liking what you're listening to, make sure you check out our YouTube afterwards. We have plenty of archives uh, with Tim from the past. And I want to say as well, if you go over to the services tab uh, on TFNN.com, uh, we have two uh, really great webinars from Tim Ord, okay? I would say if you want to start out learning, if you love his analysis and really want to learn what's going on, you've got to check out the six secret, secret ratios before anything else and then move over to the secret science of market tops. But this one here really helped me a lot, uh, kind of grasp what was going on with everything. So, Tim, uh, we are back. We were looking at chart two, which was the spy. Um, and yeah. All right. Uh, chart two. So it's kind of finished, kind of shows where we are. That, you got some panic in the market. That's a good sign. So we're kind of moving higher short term. So let's let's look at the bigger picture chart three. And uh, this uh, the bottom window is the SPX fixed ratio, and uh, showed this a lot of times in the past. So in in a nutshell, this is a monthly chart. So it looks at the big picture. And but anyhow, when when the SPX is a higher high, you want that ratio. SPX VIX ratio also hit a higher high, and uh, I kind of shaded in blue where we are right now. If you notice the the, the ratio is going higher along with the S and P's going higher, and other times the last time the ratio or the S and P's went higher and the ratio did not, that turned out to be the top of two, uh, late 2022, and you had that decline that lasted uh, you know almost a year, and before that it picked out the October of 2000, or the COVID crash, I guess you might say, because the ratio is going down as markets going up. So, intermediate term wise, it looks it looks pretty good. You got a little bit of panic, in, or you got actually decent panic in the market according to the trend readings, and you got the VIX making some higher highs, uh, the, the SPX VIX ratio making higher highs along with the S and P's. So, but uh, so trends up. It will next week be up. Actually, I don't think next week will be up. That'd be a different story. But the bigger trends up. There may be a mild consolidation next week, just because expiration week, week after expiration week, there's normally consolidation. So, but there's nothing of any danger. I guess you might say next week, even though the market may soften up. There's no, there's not a top of any consequence. I'll put it that way. Yeah. So, uh, my personal position, I'm holding long. So. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, let's go to Fort. Absolutely. Shark Fort. Oh, we're talking so this gold is like, right now. Perfect. 
All right, chart four. This is uh, this is looking at the bigger picture again, and this is a, uh, the middle window is the monthly XAU gold ratio. And what I did is I squared in blue or parallel, parallel depends. Some are squares, some are parallelograms. But anyhow, I, well, I squared action. out the times where the market was basically in a narrow range. It kind of just flipped sideways, went up, went down, was you know, it kept. It built it a uh, semi-trading range. And I want to note all those times. This chart goes back to that 1982. So it goes back a long time. Yeah. And, when, and what I'm trying to point out here, you get these trading ranges, and when they break out, either up or down, it's usually uh, a very rapid move. If you look back at uh, the first one, the first parallelogram, which is back in uh, about 1990. To ninety nine or look for about nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety two. That range, you know, the market virtually uh, traded in a trading range for two years, and finally broke out, and you just screamed up for about a year. Then went in another trading years, went sideways for about four years, and this ratio went straight down in a hurry, and it took about a year to go straight down. Then uh, back in two thousand two, two thousand or six years. You know, yeah, six years in the uh, early 2000s, so looked like about 2002 to 2008. It traded in a trading range, and when it finally did break out, it screamed down for about a year. And uh, then another trading range. Well, anyhow, we're in a trading range now that's been going on since 2014. It's been really narrow. It's been really quiet. It's been in a long, general, sideways trading range. And I'm looking for... It's, Ten years is unusually long. You know, most times, well, not, it's kind of hard to say most times, but anywhere from two to four to five years usually goes in, in a trade range before it starts breaking out. This time, it's ten years. So I'm thinking that something unusually uh, is going to happen here, something we haven't seen uh, on the gold market. Before this chart, you know, this chart only goes back to 1982. So I wish I had statistics that went back to the last 50 years or even longer to see what happened when you get these longer of trading ranges. So I don't have it uh, on the XAU gold ratio because that's, I have the history far as it goes back. But something important here is happening. I do have a monthly uh, bicycle on the XAU gold, or not, I, I have a bicycle on the GDX chart. That's going to last probably at least a year and a half, maybe up to four years. With this market going sideways for the last 10 years, I am looking for a powerful move. And I think it will get back to that blue line I got drawn on the chart there, which is up around 17.175. I think at a minimum we get back to there. And maybe we go more. I don't know. But uh, yeah. something I haven't seen in a, a very long time. I actually never seen this. So what's going to go on is, is going to be, you know, in my generation, which is uh, a long time. So, but you're going to say something? No, no, I, w I was listening. I have a question when we get to the GDX, but no, I was I was just listening to what you were saying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so anyhow, something, something's big about to happen here. If you notice, uh, since 2000, uh, about two thousand mid two thousand twenty, this XAU gold ratio is kind of just trickling down on a very slow basis, and that nothing powerful or anything. Uh, so it's usually quiet before the storms. What I'm saying, and with a ten year quiet period, uh, I'm expecting some big volatility to come forward, and it's going to come sooner or later, so or become sooner rather than later. So let's flip. We can flip to chart five. We got about a minute and a half left to yeah. go here, I guess. Uh, anyhow, that blue line on chart four coming down, or actually on the, this is a red line coming down from the top of 1996 on the XEU gold ratio. If you flip to chart five, that's that blue line I got drawn there. We did have a breakout above that line. Uh, so it did break out on May 31st of, of this year, and it's above the line. Uh, and also, I had another monthly buy signal that was generated on the cumulative monthly advanced decline for GDX and cumulative up-down volume for GDX 
on May 31st also on the monthly charts. And if you look on the GDX chart, which is the next window up, we had a breakout there about the same time. So we are breaking out of these uh, charts on a longer-term basis. So it doesn't seem like anything's really happening here yet. Um, but I don't know. I, I think this this whole landscape is changing uh, on the monthly chart, and nobody's really feeling it yet. And that's a good sign. If nobody really feels it yet, that, that's means it probably will continue. That's so. right. Tim, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show, and we are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Now, Tim, we have a short segment, and I know you have something uh, on the GDX. We had a, a right. viewer ask, okay, and I'm taking a look at this today as well. I'm on a daily chart here. You know, we're up today, but on lighter volume. The last four days with any volume have been down days, and the question that our viewer has is that, do you see, uh, let me get it for you real quick. So does the light volume today on the GDX send any alarm bells to you with that? No. No. Perfect. Uh, I'm looking at um, volume on X, the GDX seems like it has a little bit different rules compared to the SPYs. I'll put it that way. Uh, I, I'm thinking we're at support. We're, we're at a neckline of a head and shoulders bottom. You know, we're, will today's rally last? Because today's, you know, is a pre-holiday that's for one thing. I think, you know, we may just go up and down a little bit here, but no. Uh, will today's rally continue? You know, maybe, maybe not. But I'm thinking you're looking at support, and this is sitting right here right now. Yeah. Uh, I think this is just an ABC down. Well, well, Thursday when the market comes back will be a down day. Well, your downside is in this vicinity anyhow. So I'm thinking today, well, we've got light volume on everything. Just because yeah. it's a pre-holiday, so I don't think it's really anything bearish. It's just not bullish either. It's just uh, trading noise. I did notice the 18-day uh, average up down volume advanced client indicators. Two indicators I watch are both up over the last two three days, suggesting that we're, we're probably getting stronger on those two type of indicators. But I see. Um, I, I don't. I don't think it's bearish. I, I put it that way. No, we'll come back and maybe test. You know, the low we had yesterday, yes, possibility. But if you're looking at the bigger time frames, you know, I think we'll be, my opinion, I think we'll be higher a week from now than we are right now. I'll put it that way. Fantastic. Tim, thank you so much for joining us again. Folks, if you enjoyed this interview, you got to go to TFNN on YouTube and check out the archives that we have with Tim. Again, you can find him at the ord-oracle.com and check out his webinars on TFNN in the services tab. T Tim, thank you so much for joining us. All right. We'll see you next, uh, see you Thursday. See you Thursday, Tim. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we'll see you Thursday.